There is no compromise when it comes to corruption. You have to fight it. Good evening and welcome. Yet another program right here on Mondays 9.30 p.m. Live on TV1, this is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today revolves around the word corruption. Corruption is Sri Lanka's greatest problem at present. Not poverty, not the lack of riches, not racism. Tonight on the show, we've invited four guests to our studios as usual to discuss about uh, our topic at hand. But before that, I just want to remind you about the statement that was made by the Prime Minister himself. He said yesterday, addressing the May Day rally of the United National Party, that the Samurdi Bank will be taken under the Central Bank. Now, this statement did not just send shivers down the spine of the people of Sri Lanka, but also shivers went down the spine of economic pundits of Sri Lanka as well. What does it really mean for the people of the country? To discuss all this and more, we invite a four guests to the studio, as I said before. Let me quickly introduce them to you. Joining us this evening on the show is Dr. Pratibha Mahana Meheva, former commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. He's also an attorney at law. Nice to have you on board, uh, Dr. Mahana Meheva. Also joining us this evening is uh, Dr. Sarat, Mr. Sarat Mayaduna, former Auditor General of the country as well. Nice to have you on board as well. And Mr. Mayaduna, joining us this evening is the very vocal Kirti Tenakun, Executive Director of the Campaign for a Free and Fair Election. Nice to have you on board as well, Kirti. All joining us uh, this evening on the show is Sankita Gunaratna, attorney at law, manager, right to information, Transparency International Sri Lanka. Nice to have you on board as well. So let's start off tonight's show with uh, Mr. Sarat Mayaduna, former Auditor General of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Mayaduna, let's talk about corruption. Let's talk about the events that transpired during the last few days in Sri Lanka. The arrest of uh, the former chairman of the Timber Corporation as well as the former chief of staff of the president. What does it really mean for this country? Because you are a strong supporter of, uh, of anti-corruption. You've said that it's important for Sri Lanka to fight corruption in a day and age that we move towards good governance. And this news that came to the limelight, how do you perceive it as an individual and also as the former Auditor General of the country. Yeah. The time starts now. Corruption, <coughs> to my understanding, as you very correctly said, very important issue today. Not only today, actually, we experience during last so many decades. However, this sort of weaknesses in the system need to be arrested. Unfortunately, we hear these sort of things when we see that corruption need to be eliminated or controlled to a great extent. But it is continuing. That is the main issue I think we have to discuss and we have to understand the root cause of this one as well as the <coughs> Uh, the opportunities and <laughs> threats that we have to control this sort of things. When corruption is there, not only corruption actually, we have to look at the frauds, we have to look at the wastage, we have to look at the uh, bribes. How can we control these things or how can we <coughs> Uh, curtail these things in future. To my understanding, <coughs> now we experience this, <coughs> this sort of things at the very higher level. However, to my belief, these things <coughs> have been exercising during the last so many decades. Mm -hmm. Getting exposed is one or few instances we uh, experience right now. But that is not the whole. Not only <coughs> of the uh, bureaucrats le <coughs> uh, level, but also our people's representatives, that is political layer. Also, we have to see how we can uh, control or curtail this sort of weaknesses 
as uh, these things will disturb the good governance of, of ours. Uh, so, Mr. Madhuna, when you heard about the news that the former chief of staff of, of President Maitri Palasir Sena, as well as the former chairman of the Timber Corporation, were arrested on bribery charges, were you shocked in any way? Uh, not at all, as. And why is that? <coughs> the reason, these are not actually, uh, not actually happen right now. These things were happening right throughout to my understanding. Only thing, it got exposed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saad Madhuna, former Auditor General of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, I now move my attention to uh, Mr. Keith Danakon, Executive Director of the Campaign for a Free and Fair Election. Um, Kirti, Mr. Mayaduna says that um, he was not at all shocked or surprised the man in which the former Chief of Staff of uh, President Maitri Palasiri Sena as well as the former Chairman of the Timber Corporation were arrested. In your opinion, were you shocked or surprised in any way? Not at all. Uh, uh, and as, why is that? as I mean, we were talking about this Kantale Sugar uh, project and its irregularities uh, from 2017 March. And when we highlight this particular factor, uh, th th I could remember uh, I said it was quoted by media. So, uh, that uh, I mean, even though there are so many investors coming into Sri Lanka, signing all these documentations, announcing all their projects and all that, actually on grounds, there's no projects happening into becoming into the reality. So we highlighted that particular fact, and then within two days, uh, the former uh, BOI chairman, uh, Pr uh, President's Councillor Upul Jayasurya, replied to that, and it was once again well reported in media saying when referred to Kantale sugar project we have done our part and it was the ministry he quoted the ministry is deliberately uh, delaying this particular project so from that moment we knew that something somewhere is wrong and that is the so-called ministry so we definitely knew that uh, the, this sort of a uh, bureaucratic approach to get uh, uh, some sort of uh, bribery uh, from the investors is happening. This is not uh, the only ministry it happens. It happens with six, seven ministries under Yahapalani. Continuously we have talked about it. First I got to know that partic this particular doctor, so-called Mahanama, was appointed as the chief of the staff of the president. It was two days before the New Year holidays. And at, it was happened in a public gathering. And I said, I was shocked. And this man will sell the president into scrap iron. So that is exactly what happened. It was reported on media. It was a public gathering. So what I am saying, the whole country knew that this Mr. Ma, uh, Dr. Mahanama was having allegations behind corruption even before he was selected as the chief of the staff of the president. The issue here, why the screening for high top level positions is not taking place in this country. Uh, if you go into the details about Mr. Disanayaka, the other person who was quoted red-handed on this occasion. His nickname in the public, serv public service is well known. So that is much associated well, with the nickname? bribery and the corruption. What's his nickname? You said his nickname is... Bhartya. That means he is owning so much of uh, liquor license. And he was the one who was uh, issuing or the in charge of the liquor license at the, uh, Kirti, I, I just want to drag your Kumaratu. attention to something before I move on to um, uh, to listen to the comments that uh, Sankita has uh, or views that Sankita wants to express on corruption. Um, Kirti, we are all aware that uh, this Indian investor, the so-called Indian investor, had lodged a complaint with the Prime Minister's office uh, prior to giving uh, the bribe in question. And the Prime Minister had told uh, this invest in question, go and lodge a complaint at the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption. 
I'm trying to figure out, is there any political motive behind this arrest that took place? I can answer it in a very simple statement with documentation proof. This is 2017 March 12th, Sunday Times, news quotes. I mean, I mean, this is a invest. What we are talking about, the Kantali Sugar Project is a 100 uh, US dollar, a million US dollars project, and this particular investor has taken uh, 10 million uh, US dollars to the country as a deposit. So it's a known project number one and then this particular officer was trying to get a uh, ransom money from this particular investor throughout for last almost three years then he tried to show it to gain to to reach his aim he tried to show it this is all about scrap iron this is not a real investor and all that in this particular issue when Upul Jayasurya replied to me saying it was not the BOI's fault but it is the Ministry of uh, Land is responsible for the mm -hmm. delay of this particular thing. This particular journalist questioned, raised this particular, uh, put this question to Dr. Mahanam. What he is saying is that I had some communications with the Prime Minister. This is 2017. And the politicians in the country did they looked into up. Thank so you, thank you very much. this is not about scrap iron. This is a project, and it was worth U.S. dollars, hundred million. The investors' money has come to Sri Lanka, and they try to get a portion out of that. Thank you very much, Keith. Is an executive director of the campaign for a free and a fair election. I now move my attention to Sankita Gurrat, attorney at law, manager RTI TISL. Uh, Sankita, you've been attached to uh, Transparency International Sri Lanka for the last two years. In your opinion, how does Transparency International Sri Lanka view corruption prevalent in Sri Lanka at present? Well, the fight against corruption is something that takes time. Uh, but recently there has been a greater interest in corruption with the mandate of the new government. Um, and specifically, if you want to look at the recent incident, uh, we at TISL really welcome the swift action taken by Siabok in this situation. And um, we feel that it's an instance that really shows the importance of focusing on the different actors of corruption and how cooperation between different actors can assist in the arresting of corruption. Um, you know, when there is uh, an instance of bribery, there is always a bribe giver and a bribe taker. So if the person from whom a bribe is solicited, in this case a private sector organization, actually cooperates with the state, uh, then there is a lot that can be done. So there is no use in always just pointing uh, fingers at the state itself. Uh, citizens must take action, the private sector must take action, as well as politicians and the public sector. Uh, but do you think in any way that the commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption uh, is being motivated by political influence? I'm asking you this question because uh, Prior to 2015, uh, there were no such arrests made uh, in Sri Lanka. However, now uh, you hear parliamentarians coming out and saying now at least the big fish are being caught uh, by the Seabok uh, at present. So do you think in any way that Seabok is being politically uh, influenced by any group or individual per se? Actually, it is true that a greater space for um, the fight against corruption has been opened up. However, um, even though there may be uh, statements that a lot of big fish are being caught, we all know that instances of this nature are few and far between. And therefore, and this might even be one of the first instances where a situation of grand corruption has been brought to light in this manner. Um, so TIS, uh, TISL has constantly pointed out that with the uh, passing of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, mm -hmm. with Article 156A being introduced, uh, Seabok has been given a greater mandate where it can take action not only upon a complaint made to it, but also upon um, its own motion. If it feels like a certain 
um, issue needs to be addressed, it can do it on its own motion. However, even TISL RTI'd this uh, issue uh, last year and we were told that not, a, not in a single instance was this um, power actually used and we know the Human Rights Commission has this kind of mandate where it can look into issues on its own uh, motion and it has used this mandate however Seabock hasn't so it's difficult to say that there is or isn't um, political motivation and thank you very much uh, Sankita Gunwatna Tony at Law Manager RTI uh, of the Transparency International Sri Lanka I now move my attention to uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahana Meheva, former Commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of uh, Sri Lanka. He was a commissioner attached to the Human Rights Commission and is also an attorney at law. Uh, Dr. Mahana Meheva, isn't it a pity uh, that this government who came into power to fight corruption is being now entangled in their own words? Uh, we saw the uh, first instance was uh, the uh, central bank bond controversy which was large-scale corruption and now we see this uh, just a few days ago. Isn't it a pity? I mean, uh, this is where we have seen the real show. These are all, uh, you know, mixed each other. When you are giving a pledge, that pledge has to be fulfilled. Now, whatever the mandate mm -hmm. which people gave for them, one or two incidents, these are the main incident which happened in Asia. But I like to respond in a different way. Now, even we are exposing, we have to stop this. Are we taking a honest, you know, steps to this? So, bribery or corruption, even the act amended, even the special court set up, that is not enough. Because these are all linked with high political mafia and as well as high business people. So if you want to eradicate or control or stop bribery, punishment itself not enough. So therefore you have to find out who linked to these things. Now I connect that to your question, what you asked. So when they started, even these uh, politicians, they gave free hand for these type of officials. As Keith said, not to appoint him. Well, a lot of allegations were there. But still they have appointed. That means they are promoting. Once again, not to appoint Arjun Mahindran for that post. Several requests were there, even from the ministry, even from the ministers. But nothing has happened. Appointed. So where I want to pitch this, you have to curtail that also. And the other one, even if this corruption and bribery we are talking, how to control or eradicate, this has to start with the education system. It has to be a subject in our curriculum. And also we have to blacklist all these people, those who are even having allegations. So uh, Dr. Malameva, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, this government is going along the footsteps of the previous regime. Why? Because we saw a lot of criticism being uh, leveled when Dominic Silva was given nominations to contest uh, under uh, the SLFP ticket at one point. And this government is doing the same thing. Uh, those who have allegations are still continuing to point them uh, to high positions, isn't it? I mean, the system has not changed. The same system is going. That is where only we are changing the heads only. This has to be a policy-wise. How we are going to do it? Even the Zibo. Is there any mechanism to check this? Can an investor freely come and invest in this country? Now, a lot of barriers are there. We have to remove. This Kantal issue also I'll discuss in a separate way because local investors were there. There were certain uh, tender applications and tender advertisement was there. They were not given a chance. I'll uh, disclose that after the second round. Uh, uh, Dr. Manimeva, doesn't this also mean that there is somewhat democracy in Sri Lanka and even Seabok can take action? Uh, because we, uh, we saw the case with regard to the Krish deal. Uh, the investor came to Sri Lanka and said that uh, he had given money uh, to the son of the former president uh, as a bribe to carry out uh, the, uh, uh, the project in question. And uh, this is being currently uh, uh, being debated in courts as well as uh, in political fora as well. So my question to you is very simple. Do you think now 
because there is democracy and because there is rule of law in Sri Lanka that individuals of this caliber are being nabbed and arrested at least now that's a good sign but still you have to arrest the politicians behind them so even officials you can change even you can remove the officials the person who appoint to next place will continue the same thing so therefore without change in this culture I don't think this can be. Thank you be very much, uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanam, a former commission of uh, the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. I open the flow for questions from our journalists. Let me quickly introduce them to you. On to my immediate left is Sonali Banikabadi, who is also an attorney at law. Also, on to my far left is uh, Nadi Majid. So let's start off with Sonali. Thank you, Shamir. Um, Mr. Keithi Tenakon, we've seen you as a very vocal, um, vociferous uh, person. Would you say you're an activist? To some extent, yes. Great. Okay. So, should you not, as an activist then, also campaign for um, minimum educational qualifications for MPs, for example, a code of conduct for, a code of ethics for MPs, which is still pending, since they are who the people elect into office, into parliament, to make legislation on behalf of us, the people. What, what, is, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, actually, we have uh, done a campaigning for the conduct, code of conduct for the parliamentarians and we were still uh, cam cam very hugely, very heavily cam campaigning for the national audit bill and the pressure, uh, the, that sort of, uh, you know, the promises made and the technical uh, approach to eradicate the corruption, to fight against the corruption and all that. That's why at the very beginning uh, with the Yahapalna government, the civil society organizations are the ones who came up with uh, the, that particular proposed that uh, uh, sure. the, the cabinet paper which was submitted by the Champika Ranavaka and uh, Ar 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 Arjuna Ranatunga and uh, Rajita Sena Ratna to introduce new laws to fight against corruption mm -hmm. and uh, the, the all that measures were talked about in that particular yeah cabinet. but we don't see any implementation so that's the issue i mean the lawmakers has to make the laws i mean the civil society the general public can raise our voice and how many times we have done it but here for example about on the national audit bill how many forums we have talked about and how many people has raised their voices so and continuously for last six seven years we are raising the, our voices including our good friend here right so the the issue here the amount the scale we have campaigned has done very little but i'll say i mean now we have to campaign continuously and we have to line or the, we have to mark our lines when we are campaigning, just because I'll tell you one funny example. This particular Dr. Mahana Maheva, the chief for the former chief of staff, was the keynote speaker Dr. at Mahanama. Sorry? Dr. Mahanama. Dr. Mahanama, Dr. Mahanama yeah. was the keynote speaker at Clean Hands program in Gold 2013, which right. was sponsored by Siaba. To mark what? the anti-corruption day. Mm -hmm. So can you believe this is the culture, this so is quite the ironic. society, mm -hmm. what we are living in. Right. Um, Dr. Mahana Mehewa, um, who is quite dif different from uh, Dr. Mahana Ma, yeah. um, <laughs> tell <yes>. us, tell <laughs> us um, where are we going wrong in terms of um, having uh, little or no political will and the lack of policy implementation. Very briefly, as an academic and as a former uh, commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka, can you tell us where exactly uh, the problem lies in your opinion? No, I think basically, if you think in an academic way, mm. we protect these type of culprits. All these, you know, perpetrators, even after you know, last 24 years, only four corruption cases has been actually given the judgments. Even thereafter, politicians, even presidential immunity is there. And also presidential pardon. Mm. In those cases, I can give a lot of 
incidents what happened in past these mm. lawbreakers or even those who are not fines given certain type of judgment that part you have to remove even you say democracy is there where we have gone wrong we are not actually putting a, even a section or even a website those people who are involved in this or even uh, they are actually given certain judgments you have to reject them from the society that is one side and also the point of academic view this bribery corruption should basically come to the education system and even i know lawyers when they go to land registry to take a file from one place to another place they give 100 rupees 200 rupees this has become a habit and this culture we are not going to stop so until that even this is a true thing i am telling mm. even when i was doing that also we have done it because we want to get the system easily now tell me to get a system in a unique or easy way whether the government is making a platform for that mm. there is a barrier give me few minutes right there is a officer i want to take the file even he may not look at me sometimes a person uh, giving 500 rupees he will take the file this, this happening in every ministry sure so these type of people we have made complaints mm. but what action they have taken so, so you're saying that uh, we need to change uh, we need a paradigm shift in attitude I, I mean, and also that uh, we need education reforms that's right both both things should go together and there must be another monetic uh, monetary mechanism right to see what is happening to the investor will any investor will come bbc headline this news so even sometimes investor we think if you want to do something yes later we have to give some bribes even highways it has happened in sri lanka mm. where it has mm. become a part of social life of the people in this country uh, dr mohan people Mahal also think without giving a uh, rupee we can't get any work done uh, dr mohan so rather than this, complaining it is the best thing to give some bribe uh, dr mohan we were on this very show 4 uh, months ago when i asked you a question about uh, whether uh, independent commissions are independent uh, you said no it is not uh, there's always political influence Um I want to pose a question that I posed to Sankita about political influence um at uh, independent commissions or organizations. Uh, do you think that there is some sort of a hand behind all these actions that are taking place in a rapid pace at present? Yeah, I think uh, now let's see why should the director general of bribery and corruption ask shall we arrest this person? No need. If it is purely independent I don't think that sort of a thing happen. I mean I know the moment it happens by 5 o'clock 4:55 and we knew this incident by 5 Uh, minutes past 5 and we were waiting only 20 minutes and my on my facebook it was the first uh, public uh, sort of a, uh, announcement of this particular thing happened mm -hmm. so it was the very same thing uh, happened this uh, this uh, this investor uh, investigators did but uh, you have to when, commend when, the actions when they they 24 you have to commend the actions of right. cbok because uh, they Uh, they had their agents they got yeah, yeah. Uh, them no, they put it i mean this is the very same way they uh, 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 catch the when when uh, uh, when this uh, 20 crore uh, uh, operation with the, uh, the this uh, sri lankan yeah, cast let, let, let's hear what uh, right. dr manohar his said. opinion yeah. i also have uh, way uh, to we, express we, my we opinion right? as well. yes, yeah. people will decide whose opinion is correct this is my time so let me explain i may be wrong i may be wrong if i am wrong let's see what's going to happen even after arrest within a short period you have to complete these things investigations now this is where one this consumer protection movement has lot lot of complaints palm oil case 2 years gone after 2 years only they are calling for a you know certain type of statement so long time taken so this one okay but there are a lot of other cases are like that and even to come and give a statement Now I have to give a statement uh, you know this Friday but the letter is coming sometimes Thursday I have a lot of you know reasons so there must be a thing not only for one and they must actually work in a purely independent way even if they want to arrest a minister they should arrest that is where they have gone now see the national police commission giving these uh, promotions uh, IG say one thing and even FCID you know 
former uh, this uh, director they want to give extension so igp is saying one thing police commission is saying one thing so so there are certain political movements behind this Kirti, if you really this, stop this yes Kirti, all these actions at the end of the day people should not forget about what happened at the central bank uh, bond controversy uh, you hear the prime minister directing the same box to take action uh, on a matter like this however it seems like that the central bank bond controversy will now be stripped under the carpet and we now have a new subject at hand to talk about that is uh, the corruption scandal involving the former uh, president chief of staff uh, would this happen at the end of the day that, i mean that, it has simply. happened to 371 complaints which anti corruption front cafe and center for human rights uh, 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 center for human rights has locked with the cbok and the other different entities only 13 cases were fully investigated and gone into the level of the AGS department uh, with some cases uh, uh, pending at the, uh, the, the judiciary. And in the other hand, I am so happy what happened with the, I mean, uh, under the Yahapal near, we have slugged seven complaints. One is about, uh, the first one is about the bond issue, much talked about bond issue. The second one is uh, about the Kantale sugar. And uh, it has not happened. I mean, both are some, having a sort, some sort of uh, progress at the moment. I am real, I am commanding for the investors, uh, in investigators, the people who's doing the operational part of these uh, operations uh, for their doing their job properly. In the other hand, when it comes to the Lanka Coal Company, the power and energy, highways and all that, uh, we are talking a lot. We are making our sounds very much loud. But here, shift action has not taken place. Right. So that's the issue. Sankita, um, as a young lawyer, what you bring to the table is new thinking and looking at um, ways of uh, resolving issues in a novel way. So um, at the moment, we have sufficient law enforcement agencies. We have relevant rules, regulations and laws in place. So. Where is Sri Lanka going wrong in this corruption enterprise? Exactly, Sonali. I think seeing legislative change as the solution to all ills is quite problematic. And I, I know there have been positive changes that have been brought forward, amendments to the Bribery Act, amendments to the Searbock Act, amendments to the Judicature Act. However, we have legislation that's already intact, and this exam ex uh, recent example is a very good uh, um, instance of this, uh, where existing laws are sufficient mm. to uh, actually action the issues around corruption. Um, and also, and this is one of our um, favorite areas to discuss, and a key success, we must say, of the current uh, government is the right to information. Now, the um, special thing about the right to information is that it allows people to access information around the state and thereby um, appoint them as diligent observers of governance. It gives them transparency um, and the ability to participate in governance and thereby in one sense prevent corruption and in the other sense apprehend corruption. So it not only has a deterrent effect but also uh, an apprehensive e effect. Right. But Sankita, RTI is only one small aspect. For but sure. where exactly are we going wrong in this corruption enterprise? There is, uh, of course, there are different issues around this. Um, on the one hand, we see the lack of political will. Um, on the other hand, there is a lack of supervision, even um, of public officials. If uh, the hierarchy takes a firm stand. A public official's hierarchy takes a firm stand against corruption. They can even disengage themselves from politics. If politics is seen to be as, the, as seen to be the problem, then they can disengage themselves and seek the protection of the existing laws to whistleblow on corruption to uh, bring attention to the key issues. But what we find is a situation where public officials stand hand in hand with even politicians in certain instances. Um, as you said, right to information is one area, but uh, there are also other positive changes that have taken place over the past few years. The Open Government Partnership is one such instance where citizens have been given uh, 
the ability and access to co-create a national action plan with the state and then civil society is uh, meant to act as a monitor on the implementation of these uh, commitments with the state. So in doing so, um, we open up this space, we open up the governance space and uh, thereby in, uh, engage the scrutiny of the people in addressing corruption. Now, private sector bribery is another thing. I um, dealt with this um, briefly before, but the private sector tends to not see itself as part of the problem. However, business integrity in their own practices, in procurement practices, uh, making sure their own governance is in order, um, as well as making sure they engage uh, with integrity with the state, are also things that need to be addressed. Right, Mr. Thank you. Dune, uh, thanks, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Mayadun, I want to bring you in on this question of political uh, influence on state officials, the bribery commission, uh, the attorney general, etc. Uh, now, we, you heard Dr. Mahana Mahewa and Kirti both expressing their views on this. Even though the officials may not feel that they require it, whenever an instance like this is reported, for example, the Prime Minister will say, I have asked the Attorney General to look into this and to take speedy measures. And in the most recent thing we've seen, the President said, I have instructed the authorities to uh, enforce the law to the fullest. Politicians feel the need to give political clearance uh, for this thing, for these things to proceed. When you were Auditor General, did you also have to uh, get political clearance to proceed with certain audits, or did you just do it because it's your job? <coughs> Actually, I did not have. In addition to that, Auditor General or General Audit should not get influences from anyone. He should be free enough to attend anything. I think a basic problem that I can see is when you speak to anyone, anyone is against corruption, <coughs> fraud and corruption. But when you look at the general public, do you really think that they are against fraud and corruption? If it is so, under the present system, the entire thing is <coughs> depending on the people's choice. Under our <coughs> Article 3, sovereignty is in the hands of the people. And when you look at <coughs> Article 4A and <coughs> ABC, all these three <coughs> compartments are ensuring the <coughs> people's sovereignty and coupled with the accountability. For that one, when you see their uh, voting pattern, it is very clear to my understanding, people are not against uh, fraud and corruption. They endorse it. They prefer to have more corrupt people. They vote for them. They elect them. And when you speak to them, they are against corruption, they are against fraud. But, but why, would the, why, 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 in your opinion, would uh, the public endorse yeah. uh, this kind of uh, corruption in the Main system? thing, I think, most of them are on their uh, private agendas. They look at most of the things, what is that for me based? What is that for me? As <coughs> Dr. <coughs> Mahanam <coughs> said, you have to get services from each and every corner after paying a small bribe even. To, to <coughs> get a file move from one table to another, you have to pay something. People are doing that. That is very low level one. When you see transactions, especially uh, movements of public finance, they pay millions and millions. It is done not only by the officials, but mostly by the politicians. They do it. And that is, when you come to voting, you vote for them. But at the same time, Mr. Mayadun, if you take the current government and the current president, the current president, yeah. uh, when he came in on 2015, yeah. his 
uh, campaign was built around an anti-corruption yeah. message. Yeah. The people voted for various reasons, yeah. for multitude of reasons, yeah. but corruption was a major part yeah. of, uh, of the reason, of the mandate that was given to this government. But still we see that even uh, from the 100 Days program or even from uh, the UNP's uh, uh, 2015 August uh, election manifesto, there are still so many leftovers the National Audit Bill being uh, being one of the major ones, strengthening the oversight functions of Parliament. Yeah. So you have all of these. Is it just a lack of political will, or do you see some pushback coming from the bureaucracy as well? <coughs> Bureaucrats are also part and parcel of this game. That is correct. But the main role is played by the politician. As you know, especially at the general election, when you see the pattern they voted very clearly they preferred the corrupted people they disregarded so many policies and other things but they wanted people who are not actually yahapalan people but the, the reason that i brought up this pushback from bureaucrats is if you take the national audit bill as yeah. a specific example it has been revised more than uh, 20 times since yeah. it was initially put yeah. to cabinet. 22 times. Uh, but finally it was approved uh, by cabinet with a significant change. The surcharge power was taken away from the Auditor General and given to the bureaucrats, the chief accounting officers of the... I'm wondering whether that was the only reason that it was allowed to pass. Some changes were done, but I think main message is very important. Here surcharge, uh, surcharges were announced by the Auditor General, only the implementation part is given to the officials. Therefore it does not mean that it is totally taken out from the Auditor General. General Audit look at the case and determine, determine and require the Chief Accounting Officer to implement it. Therefore, uh, the the problem of implementing is transferred from the Auditor General to the uh, officials. But isn't that a, a major problem? Because the, the draft also gives the, the Chief Accounting Officer disc a lot of discretionary power to choose whether they are going to, uh, well, the amount of the surcharge yeah. uh, as well. No, here, <coughs> as I read it, mainly the chief accounting officer cannot just throw it out he has to implement and he has he has to be accountable for the action that he is going to take uh, one thing is very clear yes. just to add yeah. something yes, uh, yes, uh, this. i mean i mean we have to start somewhere and we were struggling to get this mm -hmm. national audit bill for such a long time after such a campaigning. I mean, this is one particular issue continuously dragged on, talked about, uh, you know, referred it again and again to the bureaucrats. Uh, but there were so much of discussions were taken place and all that. Finally, it was once again, I mean, Auditor General is having the powers and the, he, he is having the deciding power and the implementation part is only going to that particular people. Don't take it alone. Just think of, I mean, we are having the national, uh, now the, R, we, anyone can uh, file a, a RTI application and find out after six months of time, I mean, whether or not it has been implemented by the uh, chief accounting officer. So, I mean, I mean, we have to look into uh, to this in a positive way. Dr. Mahanameva, are you in agreement with what uh, Mr. Mayer you know, said about uh, uh, people wanting to appoint corrupt people uh, to positions? Uh, and in particular politicians people normally think in Sri Lanka not like West the leadership even a corrupted person if he can get the leadership and to change the system mm -hmm. people know sometimes they are corrupted but still who appoint them for the list political parties is this why? Uh, I, uh, one by one I'll tell, right? Yeah. So, this March 15th or 13th program was there and they went and signed this type of documents. 
So, first, the political party is also responsible for this. When they are given nomination for these people. Alright, nominations were given. Finally, people actually not acting as basic citizens. Uh, they just why, go and listen to their speeches. Is this why Dr. Mahanameva you think that uh, President Mahinda Rajapaksa was defeated in the first instance, uh, that was in the 2015 presidential poll. However, he got a clear mandate at the general election and he became a Kurunagal district parliamentarian. And then we saw this year's February 20th local government polls headed by uh, President, Ma President Mahinda Rajapaksa, the fourth Janapere Muna emerged victorious. Is this why the people still want to go ahead and appoint someone uh, corrupt? It's to, I have uh, to see power? issue by issue. People needs not actually fulfilled by this government. Hmm. So that is one of the things we are postponing election. This will happen to the next provincial council also. Keep on moving, postponing. People anger, not go with these uh, fraudulent people. They want to see a practice that President yes. Mahinda Rajapaksa had before as well, having staggered elections uh, quite a, a couple of times. At least no, Mahinda way. had staggered elections, but here the, this government is not having elections. Is <laughs> we, we're now going for a short commercial break. Uh, when we come back, it's the third round. We're talking about corruption and the way forward for a country like Sri Lanka. 2015, we appointed a good governance government. Are they doing their job? All this and more of this short commercial break. Stay connected, stay with Space Nation. We will be right back. Welcome back. This is Space Nation. We start off the third round with Sankta Gunwatna, attorney at law, manager RTI uh, Transparency International Sri Lanka. Uh, Sankita, we implemented the Right to Information Act, uh, we implemented this body uh, on the 3rd of February 2017. It's just been one year and a few months now since we implemented the RTI. What lessons have we learned as a nation after implementing the RTI? I'm asking you this question because we'll be uh, hosting the World RTI Conference in Colombo on the 8th and 9th of uh, this month. We are very famous to host events. but. Uh, lack of implementation has always plagued our nation, our country. What lessons have we learned? In terms of RTI implementation, at the very beginning there was a bit of a delay in terms of lift-off. The mm. commission was appointed a bit late. However, now we have a fully functional commission. Uh, we have thousands of RTI applications coming through from different uh, parts of the island. Um, what we have seen so far is that uh, awareness raising has not been done by the state uh, for citizens, so they don't really know, a, lot, a majority of citizens don't really know that they have such a right. But in terms of implementation, we have found uh, that the state has put a lot of effort into training its officials, into sensitizing them. However, there still remains a lot to be done. Um, when you say a lot to be done, what do you mean, really mean by that? It's a very far-fetched word when it's a lot to be done. Sure. Um, what we find is that there are a lot of transfers happening around uh, around b the bureaucracy. So you find that when you walk into an office and ask, uh, is there an information officer, they'll say, we don't know of such a person. Because either the information officer has not been appointed or they have been appointed and the people around them don't know that there is such a position mm -hmm. available. Uh, so in addition to the officials appointed themselves, uh, the rest of the bureaucracy also needs to know that such a law has been implemented and that's what will create the culture of openness and the shift from the culture of secrecy and this also means uh, that they're empowered to expose corruption and to be protected from any kind of legal action because of right to information however we've also found that um, very few of the applications uh, put forward by um, citizens actually end up being appealed to the RTI Commission because in many areas the act has been implemented successfully um, and people so are receiving do you, do, you, do you think that inconsistent policy within the government branch itself is contributing to this? Why? Uh, because um, last month the Minister of Social Welfare was Espin Sanayaka and today it's uh, uh, Minister Daya Gamage. Has this in, in any way affected? 
Let uh, me comment process. on uh, inconsistent policy, specifically with the right to information. As Almost as soon as the RTI Act was passed, there was an Office of Missing Persons Act that was passed. Mm -hmm. And in that, you found that the jurisdiction of the Right to Information Act was ousted to a limited extent. And most recently, on the National Audit Bill as well, you found a provision called non-disclosure of information. So there, too, they sought to curtail the provisions of the Right to Information Act uh, by creating new provisions provisions and secrecy, um, uh, secrecy jurisdiction. So what we see is inconsistent policy um, in this specific, uh, specific example as well. Uh, thank you very much, Sankita Gunratna, Attorney at Law Manager, RTI, uh, TISL. I now move my attention to Mr. Sarat Mayadun, a former Auditor General. Uh, Mr. Mayadun, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, you served as a parliamentarian of uh, this resplendent nation for one day. Um, and one of our panelists uh, who used to come on our show, that is Shamindar Ferdinando from uh, the island, says uh, that you were offered a duty free permit uh, worth 33 million rupees. Is it true? Yes. <coughs> and uh, what happened? Actually, <coughs> I was <coughs> entitled, and uh, the, the ministry that is uh, Parliamentary Affairs Ministry offered me the opportunity, and I very clearly refused and made a note also that I am refusing it. Uh, Mr. Madhuna, in your opinion, do you think that corruption starts from Parliament itself, from the sale of these duty-free uh, permits? Where does corruption really start? <coughs> corruption starts from so many origins, not only from the Parliament. In my view, actually, main uh, responsible party is the general public, not the parliament. Parliamentarians are elected as well as nominated by the political parties nominations and general public vote for them. And after <coughs> uh, electing and nominating under nationalist they used to get uh, in the line what general public thinks over the corruption. Uh, Mr. Madhun, uh, recently, that is a few uh, months ago, uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva, addressing the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce event, uh, said, asked the general public who were present uh, at uh, this particular meeting in question, uh, stand up if you paid a bribe to any public officials and then there were few in the audience who stood up and said Yes, we have and dr. Harshali Silva said shame on all of you who are here today because you all are encouraging bribes, but little did he notice that Two of the ministers who were sitting with him were embroiled in corruption scandals as well at that time That is uh, parliamentarian Sujiva Sena Singh uh, among them yeah. Politicians are forgetting <coughs> where corruption is really originating. Yeah. Is it is it from the people or is it because of the actions? Yeah. There, I think, generally, legislature, that is parliament and parliamentarians, are not uh, getting much opportunity to do corruption. The <coughs> executive arm, who are in the parliament, especially the ministers, they are the people actually enabled to do a lot of corrupt corruptions under the present system, as they are the people who are part and partial of the executive arm. Legislature at that level, as you rightly told, they can <coughs> sell their car permit, vehicle permits and all, that's correct. But when you see the mass scale, the executive arm who are in the parliament are more capable of getting the opportunities to do this all sort of frauds and corruption. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sarat Pai, the former Auditor General. I now move my attention to uh, Kirti Nikon, Executive Director of the Campaign for a Free and Fair Election. Kirti, it is indeed a pity because uh, you were one of the staunch supporters of the good governance um, uh, government. Uh, we heard uh, at one instance Lakshman Kiriyal also mentioning your name in parliament, saying uh, that you have uh, 
uh, that they are planning to give you an appointment in a state organization which you uh, declined. Um, however, uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, the good governance structure and your support to this, um, to the United National Party as well as, uh, as this government which is in power. However, now you are very vocal about the corruption scandals that are taking place within the government arm. Do you think in any way that you supported the wrong group? Not at all. I mean, we were talking about the previous chief of staff of the president, uh, Gamini Senrat, when he was doing that. And now the same people as on a on, on but Gamini Senrat has not been caught red handed. He, Ga Gamini Senrat was having so much of allegations, and moreover, but nothing has been he proven. was alleged uh, by his driver, Mr. Disanayak, uh, changing all millions of rupees day before the election. Mm -hmm. And that investigation, we want to find what exactly happened. Because happened? I was the one who was took him to the Human Rights Commission. I was the one who took it to the IGP. Mm -hmm. I, it was uh, myself and uh, Subhangala Thero is the one so who was the talked about this question. particular what happened, issue. What happened to the investigations? I mean, we were still trying to find out what exactly happened. And we knew that, uh, I mean, some of the parliamentarians were saying that uh, Gamini Senrat was hiding uh, in a very powerful minister's residence in Deni So, that part is down there. I mean, we were on the policy basis, we were talking about these issues. We were talking about hedging under the Rajapaksha regime and we are talking about uh, the Lanka Coal Company uh, uh, corruption allegations on the Lanka Coal Corrupt. So, I mean, this is, I mean, we have we, we have not changed our policy, right? What Lakshman Kiriyal told in Parliament is that the UNP benefited out of act our activities. I mean, that's what exactly happened. I mean, we are now these days, during the election times of the local councils, we had uh, more friends uh, uh, from the opposition, even from the Pohot tour, than the UNPS. I mean, it is changed because, I mean, civil activities always, you know, uh, helps uh, the opposition in a way. Uh, now, Kirti, you spoke about 371 cases that have been swept under the carpet. So, NGOs like CAFE, has to also be responsible for this. You all as civil rights organizations have not brought these issues to the limelight, isn't it? I mean, these are the issues. We are the ones who brought uh, into uh, the, so what these happened into now? the limelight. So you are bringing it to the table and then you all forget about it, is it? I mean, it is not us who was doing that. It was the arms of the government, uh, maybe CIABOC, maybe the uh, AGS department, maybe the Auditor General's department. So you are saying CIABOC and the AGS department the police are all political influenced. I mean, to some extent, yes. I mean, when you go into the Shri Bond issue, everyone knows that. I mean, how many times the Prime Minister said that, I mean, work on this particular issue. The pressure is down there I'm from the AGS department. And by the Gami Nisanrat incident, one thing we learned is that the officials who was doing the investigations are also corrupt. I mean, they can be bright, the high price. In the defense, in the defense of the previous regime, uh, Kirti, you can always say they have not been convicted or there are no strong allegations against them. So what about the Lanka Coal Company and the other things which happened under this particular regime? Uh, of course. So this government has been responsible for most of the corruption scandals that have taken place over the last three years or last four years or so. That's unfortunate, isn't it? It's very unfortunate, but here, I mean, that's one good sign is down there. I mean, when the people see the corruption, it's a mass scale level. People report it, people talk about it without going in white vans and all that. This is something we are very happy about. Thank you very much, uh, Keith and Akon, Executive Director of the Campaign for a Free and Fair Election. We're talking about white vans. I want to move my attention to Dr. Fatima Mahana Meheva, former commission of uh, the HRCSL. Uh, this probably was one of the problems that uh, the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka faced, uh, white vans. Um, so when you were the commissioner, uh, Dr. Mahana Meheva, a lot of people would have been lined up uh, in your offices about white van abductions, about human rights violations uh, being, um, their human rights being violated, so on and so forth. How did you all act? Not was there political influence at yeah, that time? Not only that, Valley a prison incident. And thereafter, Valley Bay uh, shooting incident. Mm. All these we have prepared reports, mm. and we already published those reports. Uh, now you are asking whether there were any political influence. Actually, when we were working, we had a free hand. If you can prove 
there was certain type of uh, political influence thereafter we stopped anything i agree with you but when we start working the free hand was there basically even we were presenting in geneva lot of cases 2014 upr uni uh, this universal periodical report hrcs l made several recommendation one of the main recommendation to introduce the right to information act as well as to ratify the abolition of death penalty so those things we independently may people can say there were certain type of uh, pressure amounting us and even uh, there were certain type of incidents uh, when the public officers they were involved in uh, politics even executive officers so i made open statement we we worked with if you can ask from the election commissioner at that time how we worked together <coughs> and we address a uh, lot of uh, you know officials uh, meetings and we said these are the correct thing you have to go in the correct path but sri lanka human right commission can only give a recommendation if these recommendations were not followed but we can go only 225 you know letters we have to send to parliament and there after only it has to be in implemented so there must be more proper way you, even people don't care recommendation only thing they are scared about a summon if a summon is issued if they are not uh, responding to sri lanka human rights commission it's a contempt of court we can report to supreme court of sri lanka so this is actually i mean human rights commission is not another court mm-hmm. we we try to create when dr navanidan pillay visited sri lanka what was his main target sri lanka human rights commission you start education program Th- that is a target even uh, national human right uh, action plan even today what is the main thing to educate we have to prepare a culture we have to set up a culture for that there can be certain barriers but even we have uh, you know successfully done at that period uh, you you're talking about the universal periodic review uh, dr manam have sometimes i always believe that it's the 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 pressure exerted by the west uh, on sri lanka is quite uh, too much uh, because uh, when we look at it um, the death penalty in the united states in many states are legalized and when the death penalty is to be imposed uh, in sri lanka many ngos who are originating from the united states protest against this move I, isn't it sad that it it happens every single time uh, when sri lanka is in the spotlight it's always in the spotlight whereas in the united states it's on the, it's on the same case we saw in afghanistan uh, people being uh, killed by uh, soldiers no upr there is no question about it they just say uh, the soldier who killed them was um, retarded or was a maniac and that is being sidelined completely and if that happens in sri lanka we are in the spotlight why I agree with you. Not only USA, Israel, Cuba, they are not carrying any uh, recommendation given by these uh, human rights uh, council in uh, Geneva. The main thing, Sri Lanka, they have spotted because certain things they are after the war, and also they were following, passing lot of resolutions supporting with USA and India. But we were actually given a target. We also must have. This is my personal opinion. We must have a national inquiry. and identify what type of uh, lacunas we have we have to come to that system other, other than that totally we can't forget it i am a human rights activist i am against the implementing death penalty if you have to implement there are 1900 prisoners given the death penalty you have to implement that but uh, my argument is put into a lifetime imprisonment Thank or even much. if they are very old you have to release them <laughs> thank you very much uh, dr prathya manavar from commissioner of uh, the hrcsl i open for questions let's start off with sonali Um, Mr. Maya, Dunna, you were the Auditor General of uh, Sri Lanka from 2000 to 2006, and uh, the first draft of this National Audit Bill uh, was developed all the way back in 2004. Um, now, according to this National Audit Bill, it's supposed to empower. uh the national audit commission to have surcharging power can you uh, speak about uh what is lacking in the present system that we will then see if we implement effectively uh the national audit act <coughs> if we take the <coughs> surcharge item along right i i believe the present uh, uh present uh, form is much better especially uh, in the year 2007 mexico declaration was made by the 
uh, Intosai. Intosai means <coughs> international organizations for supreme audit institutions. And it was <coughs> ratified by the uh, so many other organizations as well as uh, UNO plus uh, uh, plus uh, Commonwealth Doctors General uh, found uh, forum and all. There, the the problem there was actually when you take up a case, the Auditor General becomes the complainer, then the <coughs> Uh, the person who submit wit <coughs> uh, witnesses evidence then the is the judge also against one party that is the accused therefore it is one against three in this particular case actually auditor general recommends it for implementation there's a <coughs> uh, separate organ that is the uh, Chief Accounting Officer who looks it and report back if there is any other uh, possibilities doing, doing it. Likewise, the present form I believe is much better if you take the surcharge activity only. But the main role given under the present uh, National Audit Bill as well as our former draft previous draft, uh, many of the tasks were assigned to the Auditor General. That is for comprehensive audit, including environmental, forensic, uh, value for money, management, uh, <coughs> in addition to that, the legality and all. All these things are included the present was one as well as the earlier form. Therefore, now it will be enacted if it is passed. Therefore, the present form, I, I have no reason to uh, condemn it. I believe so many other things, but its scope, the powers, all these things are actually not reduced. But the general has the authority to summon anyone as per the audit act to get uh, um, clarification or evidence. In addition to that, the people get the opportunity to report <coughs> directly to the Auditor General and he can report over those issues after having a proper examination to the Parliament. That is a uh, good uh, and valuable uh, point. Uh, recommended under this. Well, bill. Mr. Ambassador, do you think that the present Auditor General yeah. is doing enough? Because he is from the Inland Revenue Department. We know he was secretary there. Can he make that change in the Auditor General's department? <coughs> Can he be that driving force? I I have no reason to say he is not uh, good enough. To my understanding, he is doing his level best and he is capable to my understanding. In addition to that, he is a chartered accountant. Under the present, <coughs> under the, our 19th amendment, uh, one change uh, introduced is the auditor general should be a qualified auditor. For that one, he is a <coughs> chartered accountant, therefore he is eligible. For uh, <coughs> all other appointments made by the president, Huh? need no any qualification. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Sankita, you spoke of certain challenges in the state sector vis-a-vis -vis RTI requests. Um, we are known to be a bribe-taking, bribe-giving nation uh, depending on a disincentivized, poorly trained uh, state sector at a certain level. Um, how is this to be overcome? We have found that people have started using the right to information to expose corruption. In a, lot, a common theme that runs through a lot of the districts is that there is corruption at the Samurti level. There is corruption in terms of uh, 
basic service delivery, but also there's a lot of inefficiency. So in addition to uh, the corruption that's prevalent, there is inefficiency. So this can be addressed and has been addressed uh, in the past year through the right to information. Um, we've found instances where the state has refused to uh, provide land permits in a district in Vaunia, in a, in a village in Vaunia, to residents who have lived there for over 50 years. They just did not have legal title. And by filing right to, uh, a mass scale right to information application, about 200 people filing the same application, they were then lied to in, the re in response to the right to information request. They were told that the, uh, the land in question belonged to the Forest Conservation Department. And th thereafter, um, the people militated against this. They found that certain families had already rece received their land permit and thereafter they spoke to their pu public representatives and the DS office had to uh, put that right. So this is a moment where it has allowed people to be activists and it's just a simple process. So one of the risks we see is of amendment. An amendment can come in a direct form um, like an amendment to the Right to Information Act, which you can argue is a violation of a fundamental right, uh, but also progressive uh, amendments, uh, progressive laws that are introduced as well. So, uh, um, Sankita, um, RTI speaks about a culture, in, um, a culture of openness and transparency, right? So that is one way of going about it. Mm -hmm. What are the other ways in which we can correct or rectify this situation that we're going through at the present? This is in addition to right to information That's outside right. of it. Um, one thing is, um, of course, asset declarations. That is to make sure public officials and um, public representatives' asset declarations are available to the public. So that is another way of ensuring public scrutiny. Uh, another one is to have beneficial ownership registers where people are holding um, uh, assets or uh, ownership of lands, um, businesses, anything, where they have ownership that it needs to be disclosed. Conflict of interest registers, wherever members of parliament and other public officials have um, conflicts of interest. So these are all tools that can be used. And Sankita, campaign finance for all of area. these, we need political will, don't we? Um, in terms of the existing law, there is still a role that uh, citizens can play because mm -hmm. asset declarations even as it stands are accessible by any person. However, the there is a secrecy provision. Sorry? There ah. is a secrecy provision but there is no bar to a citizen uh, bringing a s recent acquisition of wealth to the attention of the relevant authorities at all. They just can't disclose it to other people. While there is great value, there needs to be uh, information made available to the public in this respect and we argue that under the right to information this secrecy provision stands prevailed over. Uh, while there is a necessity for that, there is already a system in place where citizens can take action. But you don't see that um, kind of scrutiny and activism from uh, uh, citizens as well. So responsibility needs to be shared in this instance. Casey, when talking about these leftovers from the 100-day programs, public asset declarations is also a, a leftover commitment that has not been fulfilled by the under the Yahapalne mandate. And we saw that uh, after the Right to Information Act was enacted, TISL, and I know this in the interest of full disclosure, I'm also a consultant with TISL. So I know that uh, TISL also submitted an RTI, uh, RTI request seeking the asset declarations of uh, the President and the Prime Minister, the two senior most uh, public representatives in the country. And the people who had pledged to be more open and uh, who, had, who had given the commitment to make asset declarations public themselves are fighting tooth and nail to not have the asset declarations in the public I mean, domain. But you are talking about the President and the Prime Minister. Then I would like to uh, uh, highlight the fact I ask uh, the former uh, Home Affairs Secretary, Mr. Neil Dialvis, uh, and he was acting as a uh, Register General uh, while he was the permanent secretary to the ministry, which is totally legal because I mean, no one can act uh, basically according to the uh, practice, government practices uh, 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 in a position where which comes under the same, I mean, which is a lower position. 
and he has getting some considerable uh, amount of uh, ad, uh, money from earn some money out of that so we requested we uh, wrote uh, three RTI applications and RTI 10 application then this the highest officer on the public service the home affairs secretary and its staff the information office of the home affairs ministry has not replied us he just said us a letter that uh, they will be uh, you know answering our uh, request within f uh, 30, uh, uh, two weeks of course and then they asked for an additional one month for six months now it has not tapped it so Do we have that now, now we have wait we have gone to the uh, rti commission now and we are keeping the fight on so what i am basically saying is that right the provisions are there i mean one other incident about in related to the uma here we sent some rti applications to the uh, 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 GA Badul about uh, the compensatory paid uh, to the victims down there and we found utter lies uh, with, with, with the answers they have submitted of course I mean still they, I mean we are at the very preliminary stages we are not so this is what I want to come to Katie I mean these are these are offenses under yeah. the RTI Act to lie yeah definitely uh, to an RTI request to provide false information is an offense. And we have to test Do the voters now. I mean, we yes. have to, the citizens has to, the organization, civil society organizations has to take actions. And when you are doing it for the first but time... But if the government it institutions are still lying, does that mean that the penalties are not strong enough? No, I mean, we want to go ahead and fight against it and we should teach a lesson for the people who's doing that for, for doing to do that as a professional organizers organizations we should have a very concrete evidence based case on our hand or otherwise if we lose i think that will be a very bad uh, example for the to follow on. dr, dr. Manu Maheva, i want to uh, come to you on uh, on this issue of patronage jobs that are given by governments uh, when soon as they are elected into power now we just uh, i was just uh, going scrolling through the headlines and uh, on the headlines of the Maubima, I saw allegations that have been uh, presented against the uh, the replacement uh, chairman of the State Timber Corporation, Anurudh the Polgampala, who replaces uh, Mr. Disanayaka, who was arrested by uh, Seba. Mm. Now, even there, we see Mr. Polgampala is a politician. Why is it that we constantly see governments? Uh, presidents, prime ministers, ministers, giving these important jobs uh, which should be given to people with the required expertise as patronage jobs. It's, they have no interest in, uh, in ensuring the smooth and efficient functioning of these state enterprises. Same mistake repeating. When Yapal and the government came to power, for the high of your high ranks, or even chairmen of these corporations, there was a parliament committee. The parliament committee was set up. The committee the on high posts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, disappointment, immediately that person was arrested within one or two days appointed. So, what happened to these committees, I am asking. I mean, this is utter worst thing, rather than the past government. So the same mistake they are repeating, they have to call nomination or they have to see the suitable people. He was a politician. Why he was appointed? He was with the opposition sometimes back and he criticized the opposition, joined with president, immediately the post was given. So this is the culture. That culture has to change by this government. Otherwise they are not learning the lesson. So this committee is what is their position at the moment. So all these appointments in future you see what will happen. <coughs> crossovers they will definitely grant it so this is where the good governance is diminishing at the moment uh, dr malam heva sankita said that uh, corruption happens from the samurthi level i want to drag your attention to the statement made by the prime minister himself stating that the samurthi bank will be taken under the central bank the central bank now comes under the minister of finance who yeah. is uh, minister mangal samurthi we are a very close aide of uh, prime minister anil vikrama singha uh, do you think that this institution, the Samurthi Bank coming under the central bank, is another political ploy by 
the Prime Minister to swindle the money uh, in the sum of the bag itself. I totally agree with you, but this has to be decided by the President. You have to guess it. No? All these new ministerial posts, what are the institutions coming under that, you have to be guessed. So this is where we can see how President once again acting for a request like that. You can take whatever you want because you are the Prime Minister if you want. Many ministries, even their institutions, you can take it. But what is the ultra moment behind that? There's a lot of money pending it. So they can say, last government or even previously, they have deposited in some banks and got the interest. So why can't we do it? So okay. in, in that way, I am going to tell one thing. So this is where arbitrary, if you are taking institution in your hand, I don't think this is a national government. Um, uh, Kirti, uh, Dr. Mahalamheva pointed out about uh, the appointment of uh, <coughs> institution chairman to be made under the High Force Committee. However, this has not happened. Uh, the best example, the classic example is the appointment of the CPC chairman, who is the brother of uh, the minister himself. Uh, we saw a lot of out there was a lot of outcry about it when uh, he was appointed as the Ports Authority chairman as well. Again, again the brother of the same minister. Uh, now we see uh, a new chairman of the State Timber Corporation being appointed. Again, he has been embroiled with corruption scandals, according to newspaper sources. So. Where are we really heading as a nation at present? Are, are we doing the right things uh, to move forward um, to implement good governance? Uh, in no, I mean, the, the, the politicians uh, basically do not think uh, that the allegations against uh, its officials are very serious uh, are, uh, when they are considering to put the people on the high positions. Oh, otherwise, uh, we cannot uh, find out any particular logic, especially person like uh, Andrew the Polgampala being appointed after such a controversy and uh, to, to uh, as the chairman of the uh, Sri Lanka Timber Corporation and this was I mean I mean this was the case with the Arjuna Mahendran Arjuna Mahendran in 2004 left the country to Singapore even without giving his resignation letter as the BOI chairman so he has not acted according to it's the professional uh, level which was expected by the uh, uh, such a position and he then once again when the UNP government is back on power mm. he was invited that his all the past uh, the, the issues were put on the carpet and when the people protested this protest was not addressed uh, heard you're, 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 you're making a very um, uh, very uh, uh, c remarks that are making a lot of sense now. However, when Gotabe Rajapaksa was appointed as uh, the Defense Secretary, your organization did not speak. When uh, the Minister of Economic Development uh, was appointed, that is Basil Rajapaksa, who was uh, the uh, brother of the former president, you did not speak. No, so at Rajapaksa that particular time, Basi, when Parliament, Basil Rajapaksa was appointed uh, for out of the national list uh, for the vacancy of Mr. Anwar, who was passed away uh, while he was uh, a parliamentarian, we raised our voice. We raised our voice and we and were continuously talked suppressed. about it. That voice was suppressed at that time. And yes, of course. I mean, and now that you all have the of talking because there's democracy in Sri Lanka. Deep, I mean, I mean, we are having the freedom to talk about it. I mean, I mean, we, I cannot think of if we make such allegations against the former chief of staff or uh, some other person, what will happen? I and mean, I, I don't. You'll probably be in a white van, like you. Return to my bed tonight. For sure. at, at the UMP's media rally yesterday, the Prime Minister said uh, if uh, these uh, these journalists had scolded uh, the Rajapaksa the way they are scolding me now, they would all so be I in mean, the I mean, are we but electing a government that? just to have to uh, exercise the freedom of speech? My is question is this, do you feel that this government looks at these rights, these freedoms, as gifts that they have given yeah, to that's, uh, that's society and yeah, not question. as rights that they've given to uh, to people. That's my exact question. Are we electing a government just to exercise freedom of speech or freedom of association for that matter? Is that what we are looking for a government? No, not at all. 
Uh, Dr. Mahana Maheva, um, do you think that uh, the lack of political expediency is jeopardizing uh, democracy in good governance Sri Lanka? I'll take one example. Now, the constitutional reform process, uh, which saw a steering committee being appointed, then uh, a public representations committee on constitutional reform being appointed, and uh, massive debate on certain provisions of the draft mm. document. And now um, there's a lull. So this is just one example. Um, why is there so much of um, lethargy? We see a lot of lackadaisical attitudes when it comes to implementation. How do we overcome this? Uh, I have some different views with this. Now for example, they could have done this. When they establish their government. If you take delay, that's why J.I.J. Avadana said, if you want to amend anything within 48 hours, you have to do it. <laughs> if you want to, it's, uh, you know, even if you want to, you know, uh, abolish executive president system. Now, the pledge was given like that. Then what, what about multiple stakeholder consultation? Yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm telling. Now, the leadership is already developed. 1996, how South African Constitution was set up. Even this is where hiding and doing. Even government could have published the interim. This is my personal view. Interim constitution. In South Africa, basically, the former president, Nelson Mandela, he gave something to people to read it. But here, six committees or seven committees were there. Their reports were out. And uh, people, uh, after the these local government election, they were fully silent. Because they have a doubt, even if you present it, can you get two-third majority? That's why JVP, now they are putting to abolish this, uh, uh, they are coming up with the 20th Amendment. So, now, once again, it was accelerated, and also, there was a big protest from Mahanaikas also, and then, uh, they were not much consulted. President said, immediately after this, we will consult professionals, Masanga, and others. It was not happened. So likewise, they give certain promises, but those are not fulfilling. But we have to see the weaknesses of the system. At least if you can have certain type of, uh, you know, constitutional amendments in future, we can set up. But I mean, uh, may have uh, drafted the new constitution, but they are waiting for a time to put. So it is not a, you know, silent time. They will put in the correct time because they have a doubt whether they can get the truth. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen and the lady, for your thoughts uh, in the first, second, third and fourth rounds. We're now going for a short commercial break. When we come back, it's the final round. We're talking about corruption and the way forward for Sri Lanka. Stay connected. Stay with Face Nation. We will be right back. Welcome back. This is uh, Face the Nation. We start off the final round with uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahana Mehera, former Commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. Uh, Dr. Mahana Mehera, in all this that's happening right now in Sri Lanka, corruption, scandals, arrests, uh, uh, and all that and more, where are we really heading in the next uh, few months? We're just uh, seven months away from another year coming to a close. Uh, where are we really heading now? Now we see every sector issues are arising we are exposing all these things but this is our country we must find out a solution even we are criticizing government policies even we are proposing these type of policies needed implementation is not happening so all must see civil society academics all should get together and see a master plan how to move forward the way forward is very very clear how to stop these things now, politicians are once again started leading all these type of corruptions and also they are manipulating the people. Now, finally, it is coming to the people's hand. Once again, you all can ask, when an election coming up next year, all these corrupted people once again appointed. So, therefore, there must be new movements should come up. And even uh, politicians are not trusted today because people have no faith or confidence. So, I mean, we must have certain policy things. This policy-wise, how we are going to take this country to a lead, that is where 
the organization should come together rather than criticizing each other academics what you must have a master plan so prepare in this master plan one area we must see bribery and corruption even corruption is accelerating bribery is accelerating people voice is finally important to take this voice even may day rallies were there we have seen all these political parties they are coming up with their own agendas but my argument to save the country we should come forward and look some non politician to be elected in future thank you very much uh, dr pratibha mahalam i have a former commissioner of the hrc sl uh, sl uh, when you said uh, you want a non politician to be appointed i'm not going to even ask you uh, what the name is i now move my attention to uh, uh, sankita gunaratna attorney at law manager rci tisl uh dr manager br- brings a very good point to the table saying that civil rights organizations uh, uh, ngos uh, the government should have a master plan in the country to move forward uh, next 7 months uh, let's talk about the end of 2018 uh, where will we really stand uh, sangita in your opinion do you think that uh, i ngos like your organization will have a say in the country uh, do you think there will be justice do you think there will be all the loopholes of the rti will be addressed by that time what are your thoughts i think a lot remains to be done in terms of the mandate that was set forth in 2015 uh the right to information strangely is a success story uh while there are uh shortcomings it's a success story there are legislative changes that should happen um can campaign finance um regulations need to be introduced uh to address the so called issue of um politicians being uh corrupt um as the declarations as we mentioned open government must be introduced but we need the people to reject corruption not only in terms of the vote they give but also in terms of their day to day actions uh we find that citizens are so willing to point fingers but when it comes to getting something done conveniently or expeditiously uh corruption is the resort they go to uh because there is no option available to them there is always an option What's but it option? will follow the correct procedure follow due let's process you go. but it just takes a, time let's say you go to a land registry and try to get um get a document what would you do you go the right way how you you'll have to bide your time you'll have to wait it out but you need to follow correct procedure but in sri lanka we find um in the older generations and now it's taking over our generations as well where we see that you have to kind of oil the process you have to make things smoother but the net result that you're achieving is a negative for the entire country you're not making anything more efficient you're making things less and less efficient uh, by contributing to it thank you very much sangita gunwardt attorney at law manager rti transparency international sri lanka i now move my attention to uh, mr sarath mai the former auditor general um mr mai then you have uh, two uh, individuals who are representing uh the civil rights uh, civil uh, civil society in sri lanka uh mr kirtan nakona as well as sangita gunaratna and then you have a gentleman on your right who was uh, a former if i say a bureaucrat uh, of the government uh, is um, you, you 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 are an appointed individual by uh, the uh, former uh, regime uh, as the human rights minister you in the seals yeah okay. uh commission of sri lanka in your opinion uh, mr mayadun how do you how, how do you view uh, the way forward for sri lanka if you have to say something to these gentlemen who are seated on your right and left yeah. what <coughs> would that be i think there's <coughs> the civil society <coughs> civil organizations has a very important role to be played the thing that in my view the main <coughs> uh, body who should arrest this uh, corruption and frauds is the general public public awareness mm. and the uh, and the uh, real activities should come from the civil society for that one i think one major thing that we have to see is as <coughs> dr said correctly we have to have a uh, non political leaders 
not at the parliament parliament yes we have to have political leaders but at the executive arm as per our article 4b as i told you earlier the president of this country with the present or past is the one and only person who is accountable to general public directly no one else others are accountable not directly to the general public the cabinet or the bureaucrats are accountable through some arm but president is the one and only and he is not supposed to be a politician according to our article <coughs> article though article 31 says that he has to be nominated by a political party or uh, must be a past or present member he need not to be a political man to <coughs> due to two main reasons one is he has to ensure the state machinery is not uh, structured on a political base the other thing that delivery of <coughs> state service in there the people of this country have the right uh, to obtain that service without any political uh, differentiation political and <coughs> the state machinery when you see today's we have a political leader therefore appointing all <coughs> a higher post like secretary of the cabinet secretary of the <coughs> president secretary of the prime minister all the <coughs> secretaries of the uh, cabinet ministers are appointed by the uh, the president he is a political person after 1978 <coughs> he is the one and only uh, person having the discretionary authority to do it Thank even today much. after even 19 therefore what i wanted to say mm-hmm. not <coughs> at end of this <coughs> uh, year uh, 2020 uh, 1920 we have to see a non political leader should come into the power as the president thank you very much uh, mr sad my dear former auditor general uh, you bear the same sentiment as dr mahana mehwa when you say Uh, that a non-political individual should be contesting the elections, and if the people deem fit, uh, he will emerge victorious. I now move my attention to uh, Kirti Tendakon, Executive Director of the Campaign for a Free and Fair Election. Um, Kirti, 2018. Right now, we see a lot of corruption scandals taking place within this government, and people being arrested and people being prosecuted. Uh, we see. uh the central bank bond controversy thanks to the president has taken um uh, taken some limelight and now is moving in the right direction however when will we see uh, the light end of the tunnel as far as the previous regime is concerned you speak about gamini senarat you speak about mind and alud gamage you speak about um, individuals who have been in high post in the previous regime we're talking about udyanga uh, virutunga we're talking about jali vikram surya both cousins of uh, the former president when will we see some justice meted out against these individuals i mean the laying of justice is one of the key issues where are the corruption fraud is encouraged in sri lanka mm-hmm. we see that uh, even on this particular case of the former chief of staff i mean what will the ult- what could be the ultimate penalty uh, this uh, man uh, will get out uh, for planning something for almost 3 years so uh, in the other hand we see the very inefficient boi uh has came on and uh, the salaries of the executives of the boi was uh, increased uh, almost to 1 million and the, uh, and uh, security and exchange commission now is having a ceo which is paid 1 million and is the highest paid government servant uh, in the sector so i mean are we really getting the best out of that i got to know that on boi this BOI chairman is only coming to his office only one day per week so this is corruption in the other hand with this is when you go into the big picture this is also corruption so it's a we are having a corrupt country corrupt practices mm-hmm. are seen in the normalcy of the country so the people has to act on this people have to raise their voice and that's the only way out of this crisis What is the alternative, Kirti? Uh, 
I mean, the issue politically, each and every five years we try to change it politically. But as what we see that changing the heads from an election, a presidential or a parliamentary election, it won't happen. So simply the issue we have to ensure them some sort of a culture, some sort of a system to be introduced and it will take some time but we have to start it from somewhere. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, can I, can I one second? Yeah, yes, very quickly. RTI application, today we got a good result. BOI chairman salary, 350,000 increased to 8 lakhs. One million. One, one million. million. One million. So he's coming only one day to the office, one million. I also like a post. No, Security and Exchange Commission, uh, the, the, the CEO, Director General one of the of the of the of the uh, Security and Exchange Commission is paid one million. Thank Atavis. you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pratiba Mahana Mehva, former Commissioner of the HRCSL, for joining us uh, this evening on the show. It's always nice to have you on board. Thank you very much, Mr. Sarat Mayaduna, former Auditor General. It's always a pe pleasure to listen to you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayaduna. Also joining us this evening was uh, Keith Zendiko, an executive director of the campaign for free and fair election. Uh, very vocal indeed. It's nice to see you uh, raising your voice, at least now, <laughs> with the new regime coming into power, KT. However, it's always a pleasure to have you on board. And always Sangeeta Gunaratna, attorney at law manager, RCITISL, joining, for joining us this evening on the show. It's always a pleasure to have new faces on Face the Nation. Thank you very much, Nadim. Thank you very much, uh, Sunali Vanizabadi, who's also an attorney at law, for joining us this evening on the show. I leave you tonight with a quote as I always do. Power doesn't corrupt people. People corrupt power. Take care and good night.